let me give you an example of uh, what a velocity pressure traverse looks like. We've got a 12 inch round duct and the standard 111 prescribes that the measurement requirements for a 12 inch round duct consist of measuring 10 points on each of three axes that are 60 degrees apart. The location of the 10 points are prescribed by the log Chebyshev method, which dictates the exact location on each, each one of these axes that you're gonna measure these velocities. What this is doing is basically giving you 30 little equal area segments. So you're measuring the velocity in each one of these 30 equal area segments. You'll come up with 30 average velocities. You sum them, you take the average, and then you multiply by the inside area of the duct to determine the airflow. It's critical to understand that you've got to measure the inside area. For example, if we were using a 12 inch duct, we don't use the area that a 12 inch diameter gives you. We use the area that an 11 and 7 8 inch diameter will give you because we have a 1 16th inch wall thickness. The area is actually smaller. It can be 3 to 4 percent different depending on your duct size. Those points are all measured by the Peter Tube Traverse, transmitted through the pressure lines to the measuring instrument. Currently, the measuring instrument Phoenix recommends is the short reach device. We've had a lot of experience with it. It's a fairly accurate and reliable meter. There are others out there. However, we like the short reach. Some of the things that you have to look out for when you're doing a velocity traverse are focusing around the velocity pressure itself. We're measuring the velocity pressure so that anything that may affect the velocity pressure reading is going to affect the final result. The things you want to be careful of are the position of the pitot tube. It should be facing directly into the airflow. You can have about a 5% skewness either up and down or horizontally which will not affect the reading that much. If you have greater than that you will affect the reading. The second thing to be look out for and is very easy to do in the field especially, is you've got to make sure that the lines between the pitot tube and the instrument are not crimped or leak, because either one will give you a false read. It's very easy to crimp these lines. If you look at the pitot tube, you've got two connections, one that's along the horizontal axis of the pitot tube, and the other one that's 90 degrees off of it. One of these is liable to, to easily bend, depending on the orientation of the pitot tube. Both of them may bend. And so what you've got to do is you've got to position these and hold these lines so that you have a nice smooth radius. You don't have a sharp kink. If you have a hard sharp kink, you could crimp it and get a false reading. When you're measuring a velocity pressure in the field or in a lab setup, one of the things you've got to be aware of is the uniformity of flow inside the duct. The easiest way to determine that is if you see any zero or negative readings, that's an indication of turbulence. Your traverse location is unacceptable at that point. You can't just store it as a zero and take the average anyway. It's going to give you a false reading. If you have any neck, uh, reverse flow or dead spots, the traverse location is not acceptable. Then you've got to move on to the next location. If these three requirements are incorporated, then the balancing report typically will be reliable and accurate, which means the report can be approved, the building can be occupied, the owner can start collecting rents, and the contractors can be paid. The job can be finished.